Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionist one more time continuing our glorious playlist on pulmonology. In the previous video, we have discussed the VQ mismatch. Today, we'll talk about the alveolar gas equation. You get the P big AO2 from here. You get the P small AO2 from the ABG. Then you subtract the PA small AO2 from the P big AO2 to get the AA gradient. With that being said, now let's get started. Some words of wisdom. Someone told me that each equation I include in the book would have the sales. That's right, Dr. Stephen Hawking. People do not like equations. They would rather listen to Justin Bieber. And the alveolar gas equation is no exception. But unlike your book, it didn't reduce the sales of medical textbooks because your professor forced you anyway to buy the textbook so they can get the kickback. By the way, now I have some premium videos on my Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash metacosis and click on video premium. First, let me do the alveolar gas equation like your professor. You know, this old guy with thick eyeglasses used to improve visual acuity, thick bushy eyebrows and white hair coming out of his chest, who uses his car keys to get wax out of his ears to prevent conductive hearing loss. Yeah, this guy, okay. Professor mode is on. Okay, my kids, we will calculate the alveolar gas equation. So we want to know the PaO2 equals. Then you open a, like a, a, I don't know, rectangular parenthesis. Then you get this PB. And for some reason, you subtract water. Then you close the small parenthesis and then close the biggest one. And then times, I'm sorry, don't close the big one times F I O two for some other reason, then close it minus open another one P small a CO two over O point eight. Now in some books, they will say P a CO two multiply one point to 25. I don't know why, but this is just like some, some authors differ and argue with each others. Okay, so this is kids. This is the alveolar gas equation. Very important for your exam. Make sense? Say, ah. Uh, now, if you, for every reason you fail your test, don't blame me. Just blame yourselves. Now, let's do it the metacosis way. The problem with the alveolar gas equation that you don't know the purpose of the freaking equation. Why? As Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. May I borrow his thoughts and say, he who has a Y to alveolar gas equation can bear almost any pressure. No pun intended. So here's the purpose of the alveolar gas equation. Let's say you have patient A and patient B. Both of them have a restrictive lung disease. But patient A has an extra thoracic. The problem is in the chest wall. We call this extrinsic restrictive lung disease. Patient B has an intrinsic restrictive lung disease, such as pulmonary fibrosis, we call this parenchymal. How are you going to differentiate between the two patients without using help from the radiologist? So don't say x-ray or CT, no, 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 I'm gonna make it simple. Let's try the ABG. ABG is gonna show decrease PaO2, which is hypoxemia, and decrease oxygen saturation in patient A and in patient B. Oh, so it didn't work, let's try the spirometry. The spirometry will show decreased lung volumes and capacities here because it's restrictive and decreased lung volume and capacities here because it's also restrictive. Oh, so let's try like, uh, uh, I don't know, other stuff. What like, what do you mean by other stuff? Uh, decrease FEV1, decrease FVC. Yes, both of them. Increase the ratio. Yes, both of them. Let's try the pulse oximetry to show the uh, oxygen saturation. Again, it's decrease in both. So the ABG did not help you, did it? The pulse oximetry could not assist you, could it? And for sure as heck, the spirometer did not do the job either. So what's the solution? It's the AA gradient. Big A minus small a. We call this the AA gradient. Where do we get the small a from? We get the small a from the ABG. Where do we get the big A from? we get it from the alveolar gas equation. Once you calculate the AA gradient, you can easily distinguish between extrinsic and intrinsic 
restrictive lung disease. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Let me remind you from a previous video when we talked about the pulmonary function test. Spirometry, limitation, and solutions. One of the limitations of the freaking stupid spirometry, it could not differentiate between intrinsic and extrinsic restrictive lung disease. Intrinsic such as pulmonary fibrosis, extrinsic as chest wall disease. So what was the solution? You'll need one of three. Either you use the flow volume loop, you use the DLCO, or you use the A. A gradient. You get the big A from the alveolar gas equation, you get the small a from the ABG, calculate the gradient. If the gradient is normal, the lung is normal. Boom! End of issue. If the gradient is abnormal, it's in the lung. So if the gradient is normal, it's an extrinsic restrictive lung disease. If the gradient is widened, it's an intrinsic or parenchymal restrictive lung disease. I rest my case. He who has a Y to the alveolar gas equation can bear almost any pressure. Now, there is a difference between the atmospheric air and the alveolar air. First, let's talk about the gases and then the atmospheric air, which is physics. Okay, we don't care about physics right now, but we care about medicine, alveolar air. So nitrogen, if you remember physics, nitrogen constitutes 78% of the atmospheric air. Okay, shut up. But in the alveoli, it's 79.6. So it's higher. Why? because the oxygen is lower. So oxygen was 21% in the atmosphere, we call this FiO2, but it's kind of 15% in the alveolar air. Carbon dioxide is almost non-existent in the atmospheric air, but it's six freaking percent in the alveolar air. And this 6% is crucial because too much CO2, you can die from acidosis, too little CO2, you can die from alkalosis. Life is only possible within a very narrow range of pH change. So between 7 and 7.7 .7 you can live. Less than 7 you die from acidosis. More than 7.7 .7 you die from alkalosis. Both are bad. He who has a why to live can bear almost any pressure. Speaking of pressure, let's talk about atmospheric pressure. You know, from physics, normally at sea level it's 760 millimeters of mercury, which happens to be equal 760 torr, which happens to equal 1 ATM. Okay, this is not the machine at the bank. You know this automated teller machine that swallows your credit card and then spits the cash back to you? Oh okay, yeah, this one. Atmospheric pressure is the total dry pressure of gases plus the wet. So the dry plus wet equals atmospheric. Dry is everything. Wet is just the water vapor. So oxygen is dry, CO2 is dry, nitrogen is dry, but water vapor is wet. Therefore, total dry pressure of gases equals atmospheric pressure minus pressure of water vapor. Okay, total dry pressure of gases equal atmospheric pressure, which is 760 minus pressure of water vapor. I'm telling you it's 47. So you have 713 millimeters of mercury. This is what total dry pressure of gases in the atmosphere. But in the atmosphere, not all gases are created equal. Nitrogen is so important, it's like 78% of the atmospheric air, oxygen is 20%, and carbon dioxide is almost non-existent. So, they exert different kind of pressure from within the 713. Okay, so let's get specific. Let's talk about the partial pressure of a gas, let's say oxygen. You get the total dry pressure times the fraction of this gas in the atmosphere. Translation, let's talk about oxygen. You get the total dry pressure, which is 713, times the percentage or the fraction of oxygen in the freaking atmosphere, which is 21%. You do the math, it's around 150 millimeters of mercury. This is an important number. We call this PiO2, not FiO2. FiO2 is just the 21%, but the 150 is called PiO2, partial pressure of oxygen. And I stands for inspired. This was in the atmosphere, something your crazy physicist or physics professor care about. But as doctors, we don't care about the, this 150 PiO2. We care about a deeper issue, which is P big AO2. Now, wait a second, how do you do it? Same freaking idea. You get the total dry pressure, which is 713, times the fraction of gas in the atmosphere. The fraction of oxygen in the atmosphere was 21%, but 
in the alveoli, it's around 14.8 or 15%. You do the freaking math and it's 0105 millimeters mercury. And this is very important. When we calculate the AA gradient, I was talking about this big A. You can do the same thing for carbon dioxide. It's almost non-existent in the atmosphere. So you get the 713 times 0 0.04, so 28 millimeters of mercury. Then you get in the alveoli times 5.6, which is happened to be very close to 6%, equals 40 millimeters of mercury. And this is called P big A CO2. Let's do it in a more simplistic way. Atmospheric pressure is 760. Okay, if IO2 for oxygen is 21%, we get it. Oxygen constitutes 21% of the atmospheric air. Okay. PIO2, you multiply those two together. You get 150 millimeters of mercury. Only your crazy physics professor care about this number. Okay. B, big AO2, you get this FIO2 and multiply it by the total dry pressure. But I'm talking about FIO2 not in the atmosphere, but in the alveoli. So it's 14.8 instead of 21%, you get 105, and this is the P, pig AO2. You get the P small AO2 from the freaking ABG, or arterial blood gas. You subtract it from the big A, and this is called the AA gradient, and it's normally between 5 and 15 millimeters of mercury. If the AA gradient increases, the problem is in the lung. It's an intrinsic problem. If the AA gradient is normal, the lung is normal. If you have a problem, blame the chest wall, blame your muscles, blame your nerves, blame your hypoventilation from your crazy brainstem, but do not blame the lung if the AA gradient is normal. In the alveoli, the P big AO2 is 105, but the P small AO2 is about 100. You might think, oh, this is 105, why didn't the oxygen just go to the blood in gas exchange as just 105? I'll tell you why. Because there are some veins such as bronchial veins, not the pulmonary veins, no, 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 the other circulation, bronchial veins. They just dip some CO2, which has, or some deoxygenated blood, which has a PaO2 of 40, onto the arterial blood. Now 105 is being diluted by this deoxygenated blood, leading to a hundred millimeters of mercury, P small AO2. That's why we have a gradient. It's perfectly normal that you have a gradient because all of you have bronchial veins and sometimes teeny tiny branches of coronary veins. The coronary venous circulation and anatomy is mind boggling. So I don't care, just bronchial veins. They dip some deoxygenated blood on the pulmonary artery. That's why instead of 105, we have 100 millimeters of mercury as the P small AO2, and that's why we have an AA gradient, which is perfectly fine, as long as it ranges between 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury, and this is gonna depend on your age, as we will discuss in the next video. Same thing with CO2, although we don't care that much about CO2. CO2 comes from the systemic veins, thanks to metabolism by the cells, as 45 or 46 millimeters of mercury, PVCO2. Then it goes to the right atrium, right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps the CO2 into the pulmonary veins. Here is the pulmonary vein in exchange with the alveolus. Here is 45. And then when 45 goes to the alveoli, the CO2 in the arterial blood is going to be lower, it's going to be 40. But then the CO2 coming and going to the alveoli to be exhaled out is 45. And it even can increase slightly over 45 because the alveoli are human beings too. I mean, they are living tissues too. They breathe. They produce some CO2. They will add it to the CO2 here and breathe it out. That's why the P big A CO2 is bigger than the P small A CO2 because of this phenomenon. Big by how much? You get this P small A CO2, which is 40, and you multiply it by 1. 0.25 or you can divide it by 0.8 which is mathematically the same thing so if you get this 40 and multiply it by 1.25 it's gonna be 50 which is very closer to 46 or as the co2 goes out so that's the idea that's why we divide the p big a i mean p small a co2 by 0.8 why don't we just measure the alveolar co2 man it's very difficult to measure the alveolar. do you want me to like poke your lung and get some co2 no we just get a sample from arterial blood called p small a co2 
multiplied by 1.25 and I have my P big A CO2. Hopefully this is going to make more sense now. P big A O2, P small A O2, the difference between them is the A A gradient. Why do we have an A A gradient? Two reasons. First reason, the bronchial veins are dumping CO2 onto the pulmonary artery and vein. Also, remember there is a VQ mismatch. There is a mismatch between the apex and the base. This contributes to partly to the AA gradient. So two causes of the A gradient, bronchial veins and the mismatch. Let's do it again. P big AO2 equals 105. This is the whole story. At the end of the day, the P big AO2 is going to equal 105. So our purpose is to make this equation equals 105. How do we do it? First, P big AO2 equals 150 minus 45. Wait, wait a second. What's the 150? It's the PIO2. It's the oxygen partial pressure in the atmosphere. The thing that your crazy physics professor care about. Minus P big A CO2. Why do you subtract the CO2 from the oxygen? I'll tell you why. In your nice alveolus, when you have P big A O2 and you have P big A CO2, these two hate, hate each other. They counteract each other. If oxygen is high in the alveolus, CO2 is going to be low. If oxygen is going to be low, P A CO2 is going to be high. Okay, take it to the bank. So if we want to calculate the P big A O2 honestly and fairly, you got to subtract the P A C O2 because they hate each other, honey. All right, so P big A O2 equals P I O2 minus P big A C O2. So 150 minus 45, 105. Okay, I've told you that the P I O2 equals the total dry pressure in the atmosphere, which was 713 times F I O2. We're talking about the atmosphere, so this is 21%. Okay, minus P big A C O2. I've told you that measuring the P big A C O2 is very difficult practically. So we get the P small A C O2, and then we divide it by 0 0.8. We call it the respiratory quotient. You get 713 times 21%, and this is going to equal 150 minus p small a co2 over respiratory quotient so p small a co2 is 40 over 0 0.8 this is going to equal 50 but i've told you before that the alveoli themselves have co2 so you should decrease the 42 into like 38 or 36. if you do 36 divided by 0 0.8 you will get your 45. so here is the alveolar gas equation nice and clear you get the total dry pressure in the atmosphere what do you mean by dry I mean the atmospheric pressure minus the water vapor. Subtract the wet to get the dry. You subtract the wet from the total to get the dry. Okay, times FiO2, which is 21%. Minus, since we cannot easily calculate the P big ACO2, we calculate the P small ACO2 and divide it by 0 0.8. Let's do it in a very sophisticated and simple way. P big AO2 equals, all right, it equals the oxygen minus the CO2 because they hate each other. Okay, let's start with the CO2 because it P big A CO2, very hard to calculate. You get the P A CO2 from the artery through APG divided by 0 0.8 or multiply by 1.25, same freaking concept. Let's talk about the oxygen. Is your lung dry like a robot or is it wet and moist? And the answer is your lung is wet and moist. You should subtract the water vapor to get the dry pressure. So this is the atmospheric pressure minus the pressure of water vapor in the atmosphere. Now we have the pressure of the dry gases times FiO2 because we only want to calculate the portion of the oxygen. And that's it, baby. Let's have some fun. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. If you do not know who Paul Revere is, you are not very good at history, period. Now let's leave Paul Revere and talk about the atmosphere. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. To calculate the P big AO2 to get into gear, get the atmospheric pressure, subtract water vapor here. Multiply the result by oxygen fraction. We must get rid of CO2 before we can make traction. Divide the P small a CO2 by 0.8. Subtract from the aforementioned love trumps hate. By love, I mean oxygen. By hate, I mean carbon dioxide. You subtract the carbon dioxide from the oxygen. Big A from the equation. 
small a from abg. Calculate the AA gradient, you are on a spray. Between alveolar and arterial, oxygen has a gradient. Find it to know if pathology from lung is radiant. I've told you that if the AA gradient is normal, the pathology is not in the lung. But if it's high, the pathology is in the lung. And talking about the AA gradient, I say high if from within, normal if from without. Here is the whole story, there is no doubt. From within means the pathology is in the lung. If the pathology is in the lung, the AA gradient is high. If the pathology is from without the lung, from outside, the AA gradient is normal. Here is the whole story, there is no doubt. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. He who has a why to the alveolar gas equation can bear almost any pressure. I know you're struggling to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Staph, and Streptin E. coli. Check out this website called Picmonic. The link is in the description below. This is a video mnemonic website. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have 100 cases there. You can get my premium videos, my cases, my post notes, my PDF notes, all organized in Dropbox folders available for direct download and you can keep for you forever. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, be safe, stay happy and study hard. And remember Friedrich Nietzsche's words, he who has a why to live can bear almost anyhow. Make a plan, stick to your plan, be persistent and you're gonna win. I believe in you more than you believe in yourself.